Good morning. With this new tutorial, I will, I'm going to show how to do a texture analysis using the new mouth version. It's still in beta, but I will release the full version in a few days unless someone finds uh, some new outstanding bugs that will require more work on it. So I will use some data from D19. Uh, 2D curve detector, so you will see how to work uh, with D19 uh, particular uh, geometry. Okay, no, now to download the beta version, okay, uh, you go to mod web page and you need to add uh, by hand beta.html. Okay, then you arrive to a similar page to the downloading one. Okay, this is beta version, is uh, fully functional uh, if you are going to use it uh, please check uh, if you find some bugs please report to me so I can correct before releasing the next version I hope there are no uh, really outstanding or uh, stopping bugs on it so I will download the 64-bit for macOS 10. Actually, I have 10.8 in my computer, so I need this one that is signed. Okay, what it means uh, with the new system of Mac and probably also with the, the new Windows 8, uh, uh, actually you need to habilitate a program not coming from the App Store. So you go to Security and Privacy on the Preference, and you see here if you unlock uh, with your password then you can modify and uh, okay if you have only Mac App Store you cannot run Mauda is not coming from it you can run it if you download if you check the Mac App Store and identify developer okay this will work uh, with the 64 bit uh, here because it's signed so it's signed by me you have to trust me as a developer okay uh, okay, or if you put anywhere, then you can use whatever. I personally don't mind, and I use uh, that option. Okay, so let's download uh, this one. Okay, well, while we are downloading, I actually test uh, uh, the new version on Linux Mint, and actually it works. Uh, with the standard open JDK from uh, Linux without requiring the the one from Oracle. Okay, now it's downloaded. I open the image. Okay, then it's mounted on my desktop. Oh well here I drag and drop here the content so I take the entire directory so I don't need to create one for MAUD so here is my MAUD program well normally you put in your application folder whatever where you want okay now I can run it uh, on the new version beta version actually I fix the program and uh, you can put also in a path uh, even if there are strange uh, uh, character, not uh, uh, the strictly uh, husky character, like for example if you have some accent like there or even let's put some uh, well space are accepted but also something like this one or this or whatever, okay then the new version should work. So you can test also with non-Latin character if you are using them. In the past, uh, mod required to be put the program, not the data. The program need to be put uh, in a path uh, with only ASCII character. Okay, let's run it first time. Okay, I have to. I have to approve the first running, then you get the license, okay, 
Uh, so you can you read it. I like if you can cite my work if you use it for publication. And uh, okay, then you can use for com com commercial proposal. The only thing is that uh, you should not distribute uh, as a commercial. Okay, accept the license. So now you need to create a folder where to put the data. I normally don't put uh, uh, where uh, in the same directory as the mouth program because then I can easily reset it by deleting entirely the directory. If your program gets stuck by a wrong analysis, something like that, uh, you, everything messed up, uh, you just trash the this folder created with all the preference setting etc and it's like running fresh okay in fact it will ask again uh, for uh, to extract the, this preference and to accept the license now let's create a new folder okay here well also the new folder here you can put uh, whatever you like as character so normally I call it mouth files mouth files but uh, okay we can use uh, whatever even here uh, let's test them okay what you should avoid is avoid to put a character normally use it for path separator on in path like uh, character like this one slash backslash or uh, uh, double dot okay well uh, okay so create now here it is I select uh, so select a folder to extract the file don't put them in the desktop otherwise your desktop will be cluttered by several files okay the extraction has gone now is opening first time so with the default dot par analysis okay here you see the new version will not uh, only default appear not the dot par uh, okay that is a, a little change well is a quite a more in-depth change we will see later now uh, in the new version we have a separate console with all the error that you can put whatever you like so I will put it here okay so in the new version if you have some problem starting before the starting of the new console everything will go here so if mod is not able to start you will have uh, well you have in any case but uh, you check the starting log here so the starting log looks like you open with an editor okay and the starting log uh, looks like uh, let's open it starting log okay something like this one okay in which there are all the uh, java setting of your uh, stuff and then where mouth load uh, uh, the jar the library he need okay okay well this is uh, okay uh, the first time he run there is not the preference dot mouth file so you will create one and also the preference window and other one okay and here start the new console so if mouth is not starting you will get a starting log in any case you can try to send it to me and I can check what is going on on your system okay if you if it is not starting at all and you don't get the starting log means you don't have a Java you don't have Java and you need to install Java first okay let's close it well here this one we need later so we keep it okay so let's go here then after the console start, okay, you have everything in the console. The console, you can save the content of the console. So if you have some error, you are not able to find out what they are. 
you can save the content and send it to me or to someone who can check uh, and uh, see what is going on. You can, if you have too many messages and the console is starting to go slow, you clear the console, you can hide, show again. So you hide, interface, console, visible, okay there. I prefer to let it visible so I can check what is going on. So first, uh, last input mode is okay, file not found, preference parameter, preference add-on column. These are created the first time you run it. Then later, if we close, okay, let's see, close and reopen. The console should stay where you put it and we should not get any more the error there, you see? Okay, so this is not bad. Right. Now, let's go with our analysis. So, uh, and then we see some new feature when during the running on, of the analysis. Uh, apparently nothing has changed on the interface or very few change. Uh, most of the work has been done on the inside, on the core of the program. Let's go to the data set now. What we need uh, is actually we will work uh, with D19 data. D19 has a well, if we check on the here, D19 ILL detector, we will see new large PSD, okay, and you see how it is this detector here. Uh, well, on a movie, or we go to just back to images. And okay, here is the detector. So you see, you have the detector over here, okay, and the sample is staying here. So this detector collects an image with the data, so with the circle or the diffraction circle over here on a large two theta range. So we will take this image, and on this image, uh, we integrate along the circle but uh, a different, not, uh, we don't take the entire circle in one pattern, but we will separate uh, for different pattern, different part of the circle, because this goes at different angles, and this will permit us to, to actually uh, obtain the texture, okay? Well, here there is not an image, but uh, we just load one and see how it is. Okay, first we need to set the instrument. While I, I, I will not load the instrument from another analysis or from a database, just because I want to show you how to set it first time. So, what we need is, okay, let's call it D19. ILL. Uh, now, uh, the geometry is a Debye shader, okay, and, well, later. Angular calibration, now, what we will do, we will integrate, uh, and we need uh, to transform uh, the, the coordinate of the detector into two theta angles. So I will choose camera angular. This is like a Debye camera or uh, and what you put is the starting value for the moment we don't know and we put the camera radius. So actually this one should be seven uh, is actually a uh, seven six four but actually I calibrated the uh, so I refine the radius along with the other, and for the moment, while well, I didn't have a very good uh, standard, but at the moment is the best I have, uh, so in my calibration come out uh, 768.472. Normally a little bit larger, probably because the diffraction is really going on inside the detector, so a little bit larger than what uh, has been constructed. Okay, so 
actually we will use this simple cam angular calibration that doesn't calibrate for center or well just uh, not calibrate for y direction only the in plane direction not uh, out of the plane uh, for the first image then uh, when we get uh, something working we will go for a better angular calibration in which uh, we can also uh, work with the centering in the y direction okay uh, out of the usual two theta plane okay so the measurement is two theta uh, here we have neutron and the wavelength here also i have calibrated it because i didn't have it uh, the exact one for this analysis okay so this is the value 45 so 45.10292 and uh, okay I also define a Cagliotti so well, don't take it as a, a good well actually we remove and also this one we can you can actually uh, do multiple select selection and remove uh, okay it work in every way in the new version so the default one is not uh, very good for uh, d19 actually the resolution is a bit uh, so let's put one I calibrate 286 okay 34 second value is minus minus 0 0.57246 and third one is 1.5817 one okay and then Gaussianity you, we can take everything zero well or remove the second one uh, and uh, actually we have a broadening going on with eta so eta is the angle along the circle if you don't know exactly uh, okay about the angle convention in mode uh, there is a good one uh, in the last let's see I should have uh, the in the last article we published in the June Applied Crystallography well there are also another paper but in this one we actually put the last version so here if we enlarge so you get uh, the mouth angle so you see that uh, normally you go for eta equals zero is just the, the two theta circle normal and you go out of the, uh, when you go out of the, the traditional theta to theta diffraction circle you go with the angle eta so when you are collecting circle okay diffraction circle one point is at eta equal zero then down is in this case well everything is reversed going down because this is for for uh, the SLS okay you notice Y is going down okay if you have Y going up uh, will be 90 will be up so but is going counterclockwise eta the eta circle okay and then at the end uh, if you want more in the article that is in the appendix the how mode transform the uh, goniometer angle to texture angle okay the full matrix and etc okay now let's go on so we need some eta broadening you will see in the circle that uh, the, the there is a little bit of uh, eta broadening so we have two parameter the first is not the constant the first is going with the eta and uh, the second is going with eta square okay oh right 
uh, because I have already calibrated uh, determined the, this broadening let's put the value here so we have less work uh, less work to do later 2776 okay and the second is 0 0.407 Six, two, three. Okay, okay. Now, so we have uh, everything for the instrument. We now go to data file, and we actually take uh, from the from the data file. We take uh, what we need. The image in this case. Okay, for D nineteen. Let's see. We will we work with lamp files, so the original lamp uh, coming, the one you check uh, is uh, has this format uh, in which you have uh, some line with a title and the characteristics, okay, and the uh, scan with step uh, there is the phi chi omega two theta, so uh, here. Okay, and then uh, in the file, this file is quite big actually, because uh, uh, it contained. So there was a, uh, a scanning file, so the sample was turned in five, every five degree. Okay, and every five degree, uh, it was collecting one image. Let's see where is scan step. Yeah, it's five degree the scan step. Okay, and the scan start uh, and okay. So so you get here uh, seventy two images. Okay, so these are the images we just uh, file, and if you go down. At a certain point, there will be another and another and another, okay, up to the end. If we search for the first line that is actually something like this, next, you see there is a second one. You, this is total time, okay, and this is the second one. Third, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, yeah, you see all of them. Okay, so this is the file you need. Uh, only this one. Okay. Now, first we load it from using from image, so image A. Okay, I wrote a plugin to load this lamp file. Okay, then. Uh, we load only one, we check, uh, so you check everything is going correctly, and then we will just browse that file and load all image in one step. So let's do the first step. So you go to import and you import D19 image from LAMP file. Okay, where it is. Uh, we go to desktop. I put it here, okay, on copy. Uh, it's a little bit slow. Here's the site to do the backup just now. Okay, well, we, okay, let's uh, zoom in it. Oh, let's stop. So let's zoom in it. Okay. Uh, okay, no more than that. So you see better the image. So you see eta zero is just over here. And then when you go out of here along this circle, you go positive eta here, counterclockwise, and negative eta here. And the center is over there. If you have the zero, 
not over there but is in the other direction for mount you need to reverse the image so do a flipper okay because you need uh, on the left the zero okay so two theta should decrease going to the right the zero zero x is over, and y is over here so zero zero you see is uh, zero zero and you can check also the value so d19 has also a problem for a line here in which uh, that is not working one line of pixel and in mount i actually corrected uh, so i interpolate between the previous and the following line so so you get still an image usable also here but still there are also some other artifacts over here lucky is only a small part of the image so will not uh, really interfere too much with our analysis let's go but uh, we will get uh, not a very good fit uh, over here so let's go uh, first i adjust brightness contrast to because i need to see the image a little bit better okay so let's see okay here it is so i can see here where we don't have any image and for selection so actually here is the correct uh, with the correct pixel size uh, so let's go select we just select an area we we oops yeah it's still slow i don't know what is going on here maybe because i reduced the screen okay so let's just not use the border normally this kind of detector are not very reliable on the border so you just left out a small part and we take all the rest yeah here you see better the artifact now uh, then we go to plugin okay mount plugin okay this is new i'm using the new uh, image version library version in the new program so and you get you use multi-spectra from curve image okay if you use pattern from curve image is the same but will integrate all the circle in one pattern with this one multi-spectra we will get just uh, one pattern from the center and then for pattern for different eta so going like this one and on negative eta okay and so we get all of them so let's go multispectra from curve image and we decide how many we want with the diffraction cone interval so every five degree in eta so along the circle we will get one okay well here you see in red where the diffraction circle should go uh, using the actual coordinate here but okay we have to put the correct radius to get the correct one says so what i say no 64.472 uh, then the center here without losing too much time the center you see is a little bit of the image so x0 is here okay so uh, to go farther on the right we need to go to minus so it's minus around minus 58 and y is about uh, uh, 194.11 so it's about uh, yeah, the center over here in y okay then tracker radius oh this is not in millimeter sorry okay now i see i have to i correct this one so now it's in degree so if you put for example 22 to this should correspond to the first diffraction circle there uh, the cone we actually will not go over 45 okay for the cone so we get nearly everything well or we go 50 so you want to check and then we need to remove uh, actually some of them now let's put 45 we still have to remove it uh, omega angle 
well, we don't need the omega angle here uh, because we are in Debye shader. Okay, let's apply now. Don't press OK, otherwise the integration start. Apply to see the circle. Okay, yeah, you see the 22 circle is over here. Okay, and if you have a good uh, centering X and Y, you should get this one exactly going around it. Okay, want to see what is happening if you change, uh, for example, Y. Okay, we put a little bit uh, up. So seven, you see the circle is a little bit high, too high. So okay, so you should get uh, manually here, graphically a, a fairly good one. You don't need an exact one because later we will refine this center x and y. We just need to get it correct. So if you have a couple of circles, then you can check out. For example, around 90, and you see 90 is over here where it's straight, right? And then it goes 110 is going to change the curvature back uh, in to the other side. That is normal. Okay, now we go with OK and we integrate everything inside the green rectangle. Okay with using this radius, the center x and y, okay? So every 5 degree in eta and uh, from minus plus 45. Okay, let's go. Then we'll ask uh, a name for the file where to put it. I normally use the same file. I don't care, okay? It will add a dot ESG, so we'll not overwrite our file. Well, is uh, don't worry, replace, I said, but there is not replacing because he just had uh, that. So now I can close, uh, don't save, uh, image A. Now you see the first one at minus 45 is not enabled. Not enabled here because didn't have sufficient data. So it's out of the... Okay, the second one you see at uh, minus 40 is enabled. Okay, so is in. Okay, the last one not. Uh, okay, and this one yes. F so minus plus forty. Uh, that one is a little bit out of our border. So let's see what we get. Okay, yeah here, and in two D you see the pattern. Okay, so you see still the minus plus forty and probably also the. Uh, 35 minus plus 35 we can remove uh, they don't uh, get the the first uh, diffraction peak so you still can remove also that one well you see already the line are pretty straight uh, they should not be really perfect and over here is the point where there is the problem here the artifact I was mentioning and still here you see where the line is missing, there are some problems. Control click to zoom back here. Instead, the line here should be better. Yeah, you see it's a little bit uh, much better over here. Okay, and this one also didn't have any artifact on it. In fact, it is quite straight. This is because I was giving X and Y just already the calibrated more well, nearly sufficiently well calibrated. Don't worry if you get uh, if you get a little bit uh, not uh, very good then uh, we can you can uh, refine later the centering. Okay so now this is okay you if you want you can check uh, using face so let's uh, load the face from the database. This is scan site. So we go to our mouth files. We go to the structure.mdb where there should be the con site in it. So what is the con site? Con site. Choose. Okay. Now let's see. We compute the pattern 
and we see, okay, if we have the correct line. So, not, uh, and let's check why. Oh, yeah, I know why, because in the camera angular, okay, seven, uh, but we didn't put the starting value. The starting value here should be the X centering reversed by sign, so it was 58, right? Because we put minus 58 for the centering, okay? Now, let's check again. Okay, now is correct. You see the line are where they should be, okay? Well, here we don't have the background, okay? Or you can check over here. And if we just increase the background, we should already have something, okay? Uh, let's increase over here to get the step. Let's go in step by 100, I think. Oh, too much. Go back. Step of uh, 1 then. Yeah, step by 1 is sufficient. Okay, and maybe the intensity, so we see better with the intensity. Step by 1. Okay. Yeah, you see we have uh, already, yeah, the, we have the correct uh, values, wavelength, uh, radius, etc. So, now let's go and take uh, the real one. Okay, so I want to load all the image, not only one. So, actually, so I select here. So, using the select all, is actually, uh, is Apple A on the Mac, uh, should be Ctrl A on Windows or something like that. So, Select all, remove, so we remove all this data file. Okay, now, oh, okay, first, before to browse, uh, he will actually integrate all the images there using the, oh, no, we have to do two kind of, we'll use uh, what is set in the preference that is getting from there. So we we'll use uh, for D19 detector the image center X, so minus 58, okay, and the image center Y, this one. We'll use the uh, full diffraction step angle 0 0.05 in degree to generate the, to integrate the pattern, so this is okay, we don't need a larger uh, or smaller step, the pixel are quite large, are larger than this one. So we go up to 45 as we set, uh, you see, and every 5 degree, 45 plus minus, okay? So actually we can say already maybe just 40, so we avoid to eliminate, or oh, even 35, right, we say. So, so we avoid to eliminate the file later. So this will be, uh, here is our, uh, not this one, uh, this was not set correctly, it's always better to check. So let's put the correct one, simple distance, pixel, X and Y, this should be the correct pixel. And then there is one last uh, parameter that will be used. Uh, Exponent correction value, so 0, 0.5, this is called so the square. This is just to correct for, uh, in Y, uh, for the different path. So because in Y, uh, respect to the center, when you go a little bit up, uh, you have a different path uh, for the neutral. So, and this will do a fingerprint different on the pixel and we need to correct for that. So it's just uh, 0, 0.5 is correct. Is there so you can test different correction? Well, I can test, uh, but uh, let's keep it uh, to 0, 0.5, don't change it. Okay, now let's go back. So everything you should check uh, is over here for the D19 before do the integration. This is the shift 128 Pixel. So is the line I mentioned is 40 on D19. 
If it is true, it will interpolate to get that line. If you put false, we do nothing on that line. So in the future, if the line will be fixed, then you can put to false and that okay. Okay, so these are okay to do the integration. So let's go here. Uh, first, we have also to change here the angular calibration, so it will set also for us uh, the value over here late during the integration. So use 2D curve image. So it's a slightly modified one in which uh, here we got the center x and y, actually 0, okay, detector distance. You don't need to do nothing, we will check later after the loading day. We have only to select it. So data file, browse, now we can load the, uh, our file, so we'll go on the desktop, D19, lamp. You see it was not the right, but uh, that one with the ESG. So now we integrate, we not create any ESG file, everything will be saved inside the data file. The, the, the analysis file. In fact, we will go to save the analysis file later. Okay, well, this is, should be quicker than that. Uh, I want to check what is happening on my computer. Do, oh, yeah, yes, then. Ah, well, right. The problem is, I it is actually recording what I'm doing, so quick time by recording is using quite a lot of my process. Okay, so here is the integration done. Okay, oh, yeah, the integration was uh, while well, still uh, is using more than what I we put as a limit. Okay, now let's go back here check uh, 2D curve detector, yeah, now he set uh, exactly uh, what we need. The detector 2 theta here is uh, actually a correction for, uh, so, for the 2 theta of the detector, so 0 should be perfect, but uh, let's say there is a, a mechanical shift on the detector or something like, uh, or the beam, a little bit different, so it's corresponding to a fixed 2 theta shift on the detector. Center X and Y, here is the error on center X and Y, okay? So it should be zero if everything is perfect, all will be refined later. We, we will refine to get a better centering here, it should go to a value less than one. Okay. And if you want, you can refine also the detector distance. You don't refine the original center, so the center use it for the integration of the image. We just uh, refine all the correction. Okay. Okay. So we close, and we should get uh, all our pattern plotted. This will take a while especially now that uh, <coughs> my only two core are actually I should redo this uh, tutorial on another computer with a little with uh, more core to not get uh, affected by them oh well it's really taking quite long Um, now, well, when we are waiting for the Im to get the image, <laughs> um, I will mention that. Okay. Now he has to plot, so we have to still wait a little bit longer. Okay. No, that was a little bit quicker. So here, all the image. Sum, so all the pattern summit, uh, and here we go to the plot 2D, let's wait for the refresh. 
Okay, here. Well, it is difficult to recognize because every one of these is actually one image. If we just enlarge two of them, yeah, you see, we have all of them. Okay, so let's uh, do something. I prefer another view so I can better see. So I, what I do, I change the ordering here. So I sort all my file by angle and I put as first angle eta, not omega, second omega, third key. Okay, so this will sort differently. Okay, and then here also I will remove. Uh, so at the beginning there will be all the file with the eta minus 70. Let's uh, remove the disable. So okay, remove all the, the this. Uh, file because they are actually out they don't contain data okay now here and uh, actually we can remove uh, all of them up to let's go this is up to here 35 we leave uh, 40 okay remove uh, and these are the beginning and at the end. So the end is plus 50. Let's go back. So this is 35, 40 starting. Oops. Starting from here, okay, so from here to the end. We remove all the 40. Uh, 40, 45, and 50. Okay, now it's 40. Let's close it, wait again to refresh everything, and uh, we can go. Okay, now it was quicker. Okay, so you see here. So all sorted by eta. So actually, so in over here in a bunch you will get all the different pattern turned by phi okay so the sample was turned in phi and you see this waveness here is because uh, the sample actually is uh, has a precession okay so was not centered perfectly okay on the beam and so moving in phi is actually moving moving something like uh, this one along the beam if the beam is here and so is uh, changing the two theta so you want to see better here you see how it's moving and there is a second problem with the movement also you see that uh, we, you get higher intensity every time with the where you have maximum movement and this is due to the fact that uh, uh, with the precession it, going in and out of the beam because the sample was quite big it was uh, the size of the sample was nearly the same size of the beam so a uh, moving the sample will go uh, in and out a little bit from the from the beam and causing a change in the intensity I will show how to correct uh, also for that one in mouth so now we have everything okay we can compute once our pattern we have already loaded our sample right okay so first computation not too bad here it is so let's know now how to actually here the, the sample is not too much textured okay but first we we actually need that the structure is uh, sufficiently good okay let's go to this plot here uh, well we have actually more than 1000 patterns so that is not very quick 
So you see the we have a, an overall intensity is not too bad. Some peak uh, need are a little bit too high or too low. This is, there is a little bit of texture. So let's go directly. But we have a sufficiently good starting point for which we can just work uh, directly. Normally you should do first uh, refine a little bit the background. Okay and intensity and then go with the rest here we to save time we will go directly with the final one okay uh, so what we do for the sample so what we set for the sample for the sample actually we will refine the cell parameter okay and the microstructure okay crystallite and microstrain mm -hmm. then you can decide also to refine the structure if you want or later to refine the structure we can refine only x here and b so let's refine b here 3b factor we have sufficiently sufficient good data to really refine them so let's go to advance it we need a model for the texture and actually has a starting one and here the texture is not too much we actually use the harmonic okay so I should have to use uh, then normally on a texture also because we don't have really we have only turned it in phi and we have uh, a limited eta range only plus minus 35 and only on few peak at the beginning not on the other so we will not use even otherwise even is the method to go okay we can check at the at the end of what is happening using even on a on a coverage not uh, perfect okay so here we just go with uh, we don't know the texture nothing so sample symmetry is minus one try clinic so we have already quite a lot of parameter okay now this is everything uh, to set them refinable I will not use there because I, then I have to set one by one I can just go at the end here okay call site harmonic and then I put the uh, refine here so if you open you see all the harmonic parameter now are set to refine okay oh now we have all these five oops let's go over or maybe later we will collapse these data files so we'll not uh, refresh this list and we'll be quicker okay now uh, what we if we want to refine, okay, correct for the waviness due to the precession of the sample, okay, we don't need to do nearly nothing but only refine here. Uh, well, I have to wait. He hasn't finished to refresh this one. Let's see the plot. Okay, now I will refine X y and z okay so position of the sample because actually the we there is a small key and we 10 degree and we have a eta angle so we are sensible also to displacement z and x y z here so the displacement of the sample will just correct for the waviness okay so because uh, the well, you will see how, how, because so if the sample is displaced from the from his uh, center position, then this will cause a waveness. So the program based on the angles, all the different angles is is actually computing how the sample is moving and the error that will cause on the diffraction pattern, both uh, with the five turning and with eta. Okay, then if uh, we set how large is the sample and the beam in the two direction, actually x and y, 
okay we can also uh, decide x and y actually are these uh, let's load again the the paper before okay oh, often recent that one okay so let's go up to the, the figure okay okay so now, now you see the figure incident beam is there so incident beam so x is along the beam and y there so we have to set uh, if we set uh, so the sample is uh, error is in x this direction y in this direction z so because we are moving in phi phi is the angle over here okay because we are with omega zero okay and well omega was uh, zero let's check it uh, not here uh, was it here so omega uh, well phi can omega so omega is the second line Oh no, omega is 100, so it's 100 minus 90, so it should be 10. Oh no, no, uh, that is not 100, this is 10 degree. Okay, well, I hope uh, we did have uh, omega. We will check uh, on the detector. Okay, so it's 10 degree omega, so it's a little bit. Uh, Okay, so 5 is turning, okay. Uh, and we need to set uh, the incident beam, the, how it is large in the axial and uh, horizontal direction, okay. So along here and here, how wide it is, uh, and also the sample in all three directions because we actually are turning around several directions, so every direction is counting, okay? In our case, uh, the direction, okay, let's hide this one, so let's go here. So how to set now, uh, here is the specimen size, axial, equatorial, or thick, or you go over here, okay? sample position we're here so we put uh, already you see refinable x y z okay sample orientation is uh, if you want to move uh, your sample in has rotation uh, changing the the reference axis but uh, we keep it uh, as it is so now axial dimension so we work in millimeters so we put uh, should be around 10 millimeter okay one centimeter Thickness is along the z direction. So, and we refine, we will refine one, okay? So, because we actually don't know exactly, so we will refine the dimension of the sample respect to the beam, okay? So, we fix the beam and refine the, the detector dimension. Actually, we are not so much sem sensible, is only this one what will change, uh, will change uh, with the movement. Okay, with the position x and y, how much we go out of the beam. So, so I prefer to set the equatorial dimension equal to the axial one, so set bound, and also the thickness equal to the uh, to the axial. Sorry, set bound. Okay, so. These one are bound, so if I change that one, the other, so I only refine the first, okay? Now we have to set the beam size, so that one we set over here in dataset under the instrument. So go edit, and the Debye-Scherer geometry here, we equatorial slit and axial slit degree. So this is in degree and depend on the goniometer radius. So you can compute if we have a goniometer radius of, so means uh, here is source, the distance between the source and the sample, okay? So if I put one meter, okay, and I put here 
057 degree, then I have uh, on the equatorial, I, I will have uh, nearly 10 millimeter, okay, one centimeter. So I put uh, as a starting value approximately the same dimension uh, for the beam in both directions. So I get uh, 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter beam at the same point. So if you have a parallel beam, don't worry, you just only choose a goniometer radius and a quadrilateral axial slit uh, divergence to get the beam size at the sample. That is the important one. Okay, and this is not refinable. That's the reason why the reason why we refine just the sample dimension. Okay, let's oh no, I forgot I wanted to yeah, I close this one. Then I want to check if we have the correct omega. Oh, right, we have the correct omega. And chi also is the correct one. And phi is 30. You see now, as I sort the angle, now you have uh, what is uh, changing is in phi. Okay, so phi, you see here, is changing. And then we go to zero, start and positive. And then next one will change uh, eta. 30, yeah, we are now at 30, and then we go 55, etc. Okay, yeah, so we can check one like this one. Okay, okay, ah, background, I was forgotten. Well, we use only three, well, should be better with five, but uh, actually, it's sufficient with three, and we have actually the background may change also with eta. Okay, so going out in the y direction, so we also refine this. Did I put the background uh, interpolated? Let's put interpolated background here. No, not interpolated, sorry. Refine it, okay? Later I will show how the new interpolation work. Okay, so let's see. If you don't want to use the two line over here, you just can exclude region, you add the region to exclude, and you put the minimum and maximum in two theta to exclude the two peak over here. But we will try to use them. Okay, so everything is set. Now, what we need to refine also is we check, uh, now we have to wait for the refresh, okay. Uh, we actually want to refine here, let's open the data set. I want to refer to check if we refine the incident intensity. Now, refine, okay, that is the, all right, and what we refine now for the detector okay well let's not refine this one we refine just uh, normally if you have already uh, calibrated your detector using uh, using a standard sample okay you should not uh, really refine the, the distance here so the radius you only refine this one that that one can change, okay? This is uh, if you have a doubt that your pixel ratio is, or you don't know exactly the pixel ratio, <coughs> and you can change a bit uh, respect to what. Uh, okay, so the standard will be to refine x, y, and the two theta shift detector, okay? Now we can go. Oh, well, let's uh, to speed up a little bit. Uh, I close this tree. In the tree, I close this branch, so we not refresh this branch every time. Okay. Uh, now, first, I need to save it. So let's save D uh, nineteen analysis with that one. Also, in the new version, if you don't provide a, if you don't provide a point par. Uh, extension, the program will add it anyway. 
it doesn't matter what kind of extension you put here you will always add a point part so I am forced so you can recognize what is the ex which file contain the analysis okay and uh, the list file will create also something without the par with only the list that contain also some output by default okay well will not replace okay if we check in the directory now okay now you see there is the point par esg I didn't change this one so this one is our analysis file 44 megabyte okay because it contain all the data now all the pattern in fact you see under the option it was set to store the spectre in the analysis file so is they are only stored there okay now we will go with the analysis we are everything set okay I show you before to run under the preference okay just uh, one thing if you want uh, the analysis okay here the analysis uh, is doing will do by default three iteration or you can change uh, so the last analysis is this one so here when you close and when you reload the mouth again you will try to open this analysis okay uh, now there are two a couple of new so analysis say always incremental name is actually false so if you set true this one every time you save an analysis you will add to the name here before the extension a version version 1 version 2 version so v1 v2 v3 v4 every time you save so you keep like a history okay if you have big uh, analysis file like this one maybe you don't want so I by default this will be false but if you some people like to have a history so you put it to true and now we'll do it uh, automatically okay be careful that if you save many times then you will get a lot of them and then there is another one in which uh, 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 you can set it to stay to save automatically uh, the file well it's not uh, still not appearing is appearing uh, the first time after the first time you run uh, uh, some iteration so uh, some option in which uh, under the analysis you can decide that uh, he will always save uh, the analysis after finishing or every iteration or just at the end of the entire analysis okay by default so if you use incremental name true and also you put that uh, save at, at the every iteration you will create a lot of them because every time you finish an iteration will save the analysis automatically increment incrementing the version to one and so if you do 10 iteration you will get 10 analysis file well maybe if you use incremental name choose to save only at the end uh, so after the 10 iteration okay so we don't do nothing so if you don't do nothing the default behavior is uh, you have to save manually okay let's go so we launch and if it's taking too much time okay i will uh, just uh, stop uh, the screen recording so it will uh, run quicker and then resume the screen recording when he has nearly finished the iteration okay let's start uh, and i think it will take quite longer well that's only what I will set uh, when here uh, the number of iteration is appearing I will okay I want to put this set over here now it's appearing yeah move oh five iteration okay let's uh, leave uh, five iteration okay now I will just 
stop uh, the recording okay or put in pause and resume later or well let's check uh, maybe it's not too long well no we actually better not to just wait so okay uh, other feature feature of the program well normally it's better not to open windows to to do it so well it's not too too slow but okay i will stop it and uh, we see when